later tonight on Mother and Son after a bitter fight over the favourite son contest, which Maggie is entering Robert in, Arthur moves into Robert's caravan. But first, the Thames men. <laughs> oh, how are you doing, George? I'm oh, very well, thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm all right. My name is Alex, and I'm from Colorado. <laughs> from Colorado? That's a bit bold. In having Colorado, been there two weeks. a lot of people have been a lot of people have been asking what town I'm in Colorado as well. Uh, yeah. you have to find me. <laughs> I'm George. I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm hidden here. You can't find me. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well. Before we start, we always try and insult each other, and I just uh, managed to get a good one on George on his T-shirt. I it I was just basically just called him a phallic T-shirt, and it does <laughs> it does. A, Where's that? What is it's, it's the uh, it's the dandies, right? Dandy Warhols. Oh, all yeah, the oh, Andy Warhols, but the Dandy Warhols. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the Tenter and the Reaction Channel, the light entertainment of all reaction channels out there. If you are in, well, you are in safe hands, we will kind of lead you down the garden path to <laughs> the vegetable patch. Ah, uh, the vegetable patch of music and tunes. Is that where we're going uh, to? The and, vegetable uh, patch of musical right. tunes. And we, like we've, got, we've got our fork, taking this metaphor uh, 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 like a stage further, taking our fork and we're digging into the rich, peaty soil of the Thamesman. And what are we going to uncover today, Alex? A potato. <laughs> a potato. Wrong vegetable patch, man. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, no, <laughs> we actually, we dug so far down, we... Um, Came out the other we side? We went down, yeah, into Australia. That's uh -huh. it. You know? <laughs> if you dig down from England, do you think if you carried on down, you would end up in Australia? That was always what we were told, wasn't it? That was the thing, wasn't it? Yeah. I, you, you tend to be pretty accurate about your digging. And let's face it, I've tried digging a hole from a tree, and, I, I, and that nearly killed me. I'm not going to go any further than that, so... What do you mean you dug a hole? Oh, 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 tree you were, and, you know, right, like, you right. Know. You weren't digging to Australia. into a tree. Well, into a tree to Australia. No, 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 no. I'm just digging. No, 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 no. So, yeah. But well, I, one, time, one time the fire brigade came round to our house and I came out because, you know, the fire brigade were there and all the lights were going and they were had the ladder up the tree and the, uh, at the top of the very tree was my mother with the, <laughs> with the skirts blowing round and uh, they were trying to get out my brother George right <laughs> uh, on the top of the tree that was hollow that it rotted down okay. so you know finally the fire brigade did get him out and mother had told him that fairies live in this tree <laughs> right being a good mother so he had <laughs> He had stolen the family silver and he had gone up and he'd been dropping it down into the trees of the fairies where he then went down to try and see the fairies that got wedged. <laughs> that's an awesome story. <laughs> so I did, know. Uh, that's George. Uh, you know, and that's also the same brother that who had... Uh, the job at Christmas, we had a Christmas party and everyone would come round. And his job was to, you know, being a cute little boy to uh, to walk around and give drinks, right? Well, that, he, he he got drunk and spat on the Christmas turkey and, <laughs> and got sent to bed. I bet, I bet you he's really glad that you're sharing these stories. Oh, uh, know. you know, he won't know. He wouldn't never know. He'll never know. No well, one... he doesn't bloody watch these videos, does he? No, well, that's true. He, he'll probably end up watching just this one, and then you'll be like, you know, I'm going to make sure I send it. To yeah, you. Anyway, <laughs> I'll send it is, to him. This is not a George special about feeding the pixies in the tree. Uh -huh. This is about who are we going to speak about? Well, because we've got okay, ta da! We've got another Australia week coming, and so this is like our like our teaser, our promo for another Australian week, and we've got another new. To us, Australian Absolutely. artists. Absolutely. So we've got coming up, we've got a whole week of curated Australian music and we've got a lot of doubles in there as well. So five days uh, of five tracks, all Australia. I think it'll be coming out in a couple of weeks' time, do you think? Or, yeah, if we actually get our act together, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, But because uh, we are so professional, mm. and it is kind of a promo, who are we doing today? Oh, well, we're going to go again, someone we've never heard, uh, Richard Clapton. Uh, and this we're going to we're going to double track bonus like straight off with a double barrel bonus right do you think people with <laughs> no do you think no 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 <laughs> no, no. With, no people with stutters uh-huh right you know cuz with batteries 
Uh, you know, we were going on about this before because you've got A <laughs> and then you've got AA. Oh, double A. You, you mean they yeah. order the wrong batteries the whole time? No, no, no. Then you've got triple. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's because they can't have B, can they? Because you just go, battery. So A and double A is okay. Yeah, uh, but then, I, I don't think it's to do. I don't think it's to do with stuttering. Well, I'm maybe really that's what they. No, you don't. I don't. Probably not. No, there's probably. Oh, oh. No, oh, but, they could have come up with better names. Sorry, people, we'll get back on this. But they could have come up with better names for battery shapes and stuff. We got the square one. We got the big one. We got the small and the little. Why do they have to go to a treble, a treble, a treble, a treble, a treble, a treble, You know. I why couldn't they come up with, like, you know, I told you, 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 Why didn't you write some letters to the Daily Mail on this? I think that might be a good idea. I think, you know, Absolutely. you know, uh, Alex of Colorado is a bit, like, enthusiastic about why they name batteries the way they do. Oh, uh, God yeah. almighty. There's a, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll take a picture. There, so I live in a town where it is the weed capital of Colorado. Well, that's saying, that that's saying here. something. Right. <laughs> There is a shop we pass uh, and we drive down. It's called Gandalf, right? Gandalf of course shop. It is. <laughs> but they've misspelled it. No, no. They put a no at the end, Gandalf, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was in the paper that uh, they misspelled it by mistake. <laughs> and they made an LLC and they misspelled it on the LLC and they're too too poor or too stupid to change it. So they've got their shop. It's called Gandalf. Gandalf. And it's misspelled. <laughs> and the staff are bombed. I tell you, this place is going to go out of business, but they can't even fucking. Spell their their wee shop correctly. Well, they had one job. Well, <laughs> well I suppose it, it avoids them being like sued by the Tolkien estate. Maybe it's actually secretly clever, you know. And they got free publicity because they're in the newspaper. So like double bonus. Absolutely, that is not bad. That is that is absolutely. It is absolutely but I, I think there. I think if they had a, if they have a t shirt, could you go down there and have a look? And if they got a t shirt which says. You know, Gandalf weed products. I want one, please. They're always shut. <laughs> they're, like... <laughs> they're just too bombed, you know. <laughs> Back in two hours, you know. Yeah, right, tomorrow. Oh, dear. I'll tell you a picture of that Gandalf. It just made me laugh, man. They had one job and they failed on the oh, first thing. Brilliant. They misspelled the company name. It's a bit like Spinal Tap. They thought they misspelled it and then spelled it correctly by mistake. <laughs> All right, anyway, Richard, who are we talking? Is it Richard? Richard Clapton, yeah. And and we've got, because we don't know anything, and this, this coming Australia week is a lot of artists we haven't heard of and we haven't done before, so it's going to be all new material, all new to us. And so this is the same. So Richard Clapton, we're doing the first track is from 1975, and it's called Girls on the uh, Avenue. Um, mm. Mm. So it's a lot of notes to start. Should I start off with them? Uh, I think so. Uh, and uh, so one of Australia's premier songwriters, Richard Clapton, has had success as a both a performer and producer of some of Australia's most iconic music. Oh, Paul Kelly has his storytelling strengths and cold chisels Don Walker could capture the essence of the blue collar working man. But Richard was the poet that described life in the coastal towns and cities of Australia, especially for the teens and 20 somethings of the mid to late 70s. Aside from his own success as a solo artist, he collaborated, collaborated with acts like In Excess and Cold Chisel in a variety of works and roles. While this song is generally thought to be about prostitutes, Richard says Girls on the Avenue was actually written about three girls that lived a block away from him on the avenue in Sydney's Rose Bay. I bet they're really glad that he wrote a song about oh, them. I was going to say, can you imagine that? Yeah. It's just I, honestly, like, it's I'm... not about prostitutes, it's about these my neighbours. No, it's about these sluts who live up the road. <laughs> Anyway, so, so I'm only halfway through the notes, so stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get sidetracked by the prostitutes. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, as the mistaken assumption grew, Richard's manager convinced him to let people think what they wanted, knowing that sex sells. At first, it didn't seem to matter what people would have thought it was about, as the song was rejected by his record company six times. Richard himself didn't think it was the perfect song, but he did bristle at the company's criticisms. They couldn't perceive a hook or a chorus, and he saw that as irrelevant, saying, what does the song have to have a hook or a chorus? You either like the song or you don't. Well, the record company only released it as a B-side, but a few radio stations gave it a boost, and soon it was renamed as the A-side of the single, peaking in Australia at number four, with the album of the same name reaching the top 20. It was his biggest selling single of his solo career. Very good. Oh, I need a drink after that. That's a lot of reading. I just can't. I feel so sorry for those girls. <laughs> you finally get a love song written for you, and everyone thinks about you're a prostitute. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
great. Good job. Oh, dear. Lucky. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's hear Australian's poet. Yes. Are you ready, sir? I am. Three, two, one, go. Please welcome Richard Clapton. Yeah. Emotionally, you can show emotionally. You okay? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's fine. I can just move my eyes. Um, that was really interesting. That guy, okay, uh, uh, if we just analyze the song, that was exquisitely written. There were there were so many there were so many hooks in there from his vocal to the then the guitar. Um, uh, exquisite. There were more hooks than that than a mackerel fishing boat <laughs> up the solo. He he, I mean, had, he had a really interesting voice, didn't he? As well. 
He did, but back to the, uh, well, moving on, but where his singing line and his phrasing and the words he picked as well, da 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 da, and then the guitar would uh, do the echo call. Uh, mm. The echo, there were, there, as I said, there were so many hooks. He could have, he could have been in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> the, uh, the deadliest catch or whatever. Well, like, yeah. Which is a sign of a, a really, really polished songwriter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool. And that his, was really interesting. And his, and you're right, his voice. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought he had a really interesting tone to it and a really interesting sort of like, a, I don't know, there was something about it that made it very different. And I, at the moments I thought like, it's like Elvis Costello or something. There was a mm. sort of, there was a touch of something there that, yeah, uh, you know. So. Well, the, the, the lyrics felt effortless because he's such a good songwriter and I can hear it now. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and it, he made it sound effortless. And yeah, just that guy in, for those who write songs, knew what he was doing. Yes, you know he was exquisitely uh, well crafted. That was great. That was really good. That was an absolutely fantastic song. Where did, where did Aust- Australia's got this great big magic arsehole? They just keep <laughs> pulling. Call it that, really? Do they? they? <laughs> no, that's New Zealand. Uh, oh, they keep pulling, oh, they, they keep, pulling, uh, keep pulling these bunches of flowers out and these bands out of that. You know, they're just phenomenal. Amazing. Why are, they, why are they not? Why is that not? An FM hit all the Well, it was there, the wasn't it? It just didn't get any further transmit. You know, it, like so. You know, the amount of crap that comes out on a radio most of the time, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. hear something of that that's so well crafted and polished, and you know, it was that was great. That was awesome. That was awesome. Well, the good news is we get a second track from him. We do. Let's have a quick look. Being very professional with every state capital in Australia situated on the coast. The majority of the population grew up within an hour of the beach somewhere. That's a good point. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. yeah. Take that, Texas. With <laughs> families prospered, more young people owned cars than could uh, and could travel um, wherever they wanted. Before long, a strong beach culture emerged, and Aussies watched beach car parks filled with combis and sandmans, bikinis and surfboards. In the late 70s, Australia first acted documentary documentary on surf culture was made, a cult classic called Highway One. <laughs> Richard contributed to the soundtrack with a Capricorn dancer, a peaceful song named for a horse that the singer is riding along a beach on a gloriously sun-filled day. God, can you imagine that? Mm. What's your horse called? Capricorn dancer. Capricorn dancer. Drop your pants. <laughs> well, I think they would say that. <laughs> That's the name of your horse, isn't it? Drop your Feed pants. The pony. Alex, what's the name of your pony? A small, it's a small horse and he's called Drop Your Pants. <laughs> it's called Feed the Pony. <laughs> Feed the Pony, Come mate. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Glorious. Read the bloody name. Day. Yeah, yeah. You read the book. <laughs> I'll have it written down the side and lyric, you know, in, in 70s graphic. Anyway. On the horse. Is, on off paws. <laughs> <laughs> on, on his paws. It doesn't have paws. It has hooves. <laughs> <laughs> no pause. Unless it's a short horse, and it's just been known as Capricorn Duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whilst his lyrics take the listener okay. away on a journey through a coastal paradise, okay. diamonds scattered out to sea, the sun keeps laughing down on me. The crazy horse is trying to chase the wind. The music is hypnotic and calming and forms a perfect soundscape to the pictures. Uh, that fall out of the lyrics. I'll tell you what, Chris <laughs> has been on the fucking wacky back <laughs> to write all these. <laughs> <laughs> or is, this, is this chat GBT? He's taken uh, no, to chat I don't GBT. Think, I, think, I think Chris, Chris, who's a curator, yeah. who pulls this together, I think he went down, he got welded to the bong, popped up and he went, Capricorn dance. <laughs> <laughs> like diamonds on the ocean. <laughs> oh, that was absolutely classic. Right, okay. Have we insulted enough people? I think you probably have, yes, yes, yeah, for today. So. All right, so here we go. This is Richard, Richard Clapton uh, with a song, yeah. Capricorn Are you ready? Countdown, 1977. Three, two, one, boom. <laughs>
I took my horse down to the sand Underneath a thousand miles of sky And watched the waves come tumbling down And heard so many different sounds It cleared my head and eased my worried mind Capricorn dancer I'm riding shelter Show me a sign Lead me on to the tropical zone The sun keeps laughing down on me This crazy horse is trying to chase the wind Watch the waves come tumbling down Hearing all those different sounds Just clears my head and ease my worried mind Capricorn dancer, I'm riding to shelter. Show me a sign, lead me on to the tropical zone. Capricorn dancer, I'm riding to shelter. Show me a sign, lead me on to the tropical zone. very nice it's very much of the time wasn't it and uh no, i was, really liked it i loved his voice yeah it, it was really kind of chill it was kind of australian's leo sayer yeah i can see that you know it had that yeah that sort of like laid back easy feeling easy going sort of you know rhythm to it you know uh, but i love the slide on that and i love the yeah. bass because yeah. the bass was just really just didn't do anything just just held it together, hitting on at the same time as the kick, and then uh, I love the slide. Now, I, I, yeah, I drifted away, and I love, I love, I just love those two words. Actually, the way he said Capricorn dance, there, it was really, really cool. It was a nice little hook again. Yeah, yeah he's he's a pretty crafted songwriter, huh? Yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if I'd listen to that every day. You know, um, uh, but uh, for uh, you know, for a moment, that was very sort of restful i'd put that on my mellow playlist sort of thing no no i would i'm actually gonna dig that one out and then put it on a long car journey list yeah you know so when you're kind of yeah you're out there and it's a like number 25 and it's just a nice relaxing track that you could eat up the miles just you know and just yeah. stare at the um truck that's bearing down <laughs> on you <laughs> yeah, right yeah. like fixating on it I, I yeah i'd like to hear the studio version again i was slightly yeah. i was slightly irritated i must say by the clapping of the audience you know, yeah. it was it was a bit top of the pops. You know, yeah. it was a bit sort of like I that was that was grating on me to be honest with you, a hundred percent. But I, like, I, so I definitely want to go and hear the studio version. So I'll check that out. So. I want to slap that person who was out. Did you hear that one that was out of time? She would have. Got, I would have got capa dun dun to slap. <laughs> and you, if you're going to be in my video, get it yeah. right. 
<laughs> I don't care if you've got special needs and you've been born here to come up the front. I'm still going to slap you. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> you are so wrong. All right. Oh, sure. I've outdone myself. <laughs> you right. Again. Right. Excellent. So we've got, uh, like and subscribe, because we've got the five days of Australian music uh, coming up. Um, so make sure you hit that. Look out for the next couple of weeks. We've got this curated week coming up. So join us on that. So yeah, hit the subscribe, like, subscribe, and join on Patreon if you want to hear the, see the Secret Six double track, which is amazing. Keep <laughs> I think you're made for it. So, all right. Brilliant. See you on the flip side. See you on the flip side.